Good morning, everyone. January 3rd, 2023. A little bit of an update. <gasps> Happy New Year. <laughs> um, I might not be as regular as I was last year doing a video every Wednesday. It might come any day of the week. It may be more than one a week. I don't know. It depends on what's going on and what I'm doing. So let me first explain why I'm coming on today. Yesterday, if, if you're a regular um, subscriber, yesterday you probably noticed that I was I I put on a video that I took a long time <laughs> explaining that was supposed to be unlisted or private, as they say. Um, but it didn't turn out that way because I I don't know why it didn't turn out. It's I don't know all the ins and outs of YouTube, so I thought I had it done appropriately. I wanted to do a video for, I've got these things popping up on my screen. Um, thank you. Oh, I got rid of it. I know you couldn't see it, but it was bugging me. I've got something else on here now too. Okay. Back to what I, <laughs> back to what I was talking about. Yesterday, I uploaded a video that became public because when I wanted it to be unlisted and just sent to people who who I was speaking to, uh, it didn't work. And as I said, I don't know all the ins and outs of YouTube yet. I don't care how long I've been using it. I seem to learn things often, but not enough or not when I need them. So let me explain away yesterday's video. I did a video yesterday pertaining to a local quilt, no, a local knitting, crocheting, craft guild. Um, that existed in Rhode Island for quite a while, but it's kind of been dwindling on its way out due to a number of different reasons. And some of us were speaking together at one of the, I think it was the New England Fiber Fest last um, November. And we said, it's a shame. We're making good friendships. We, we like coming to meetings for this guild. It was the Hook and Needle Guild of Rhode Island. And so we said, let's get together and try to put something together and get back, you know, get get ourselves back into regular meetings. So um, we had a meeting in December and a number of us got together. And what what was the first thing on what our, well, the first thing that we feel we should do as a group is find a permanent meeting place. We used to meet at the Slater Mill in Rhode Island. The, Slater Mill has since been purchased by the government, the park, oh, what is it, National Parks, the parks and, well, the the, the area of the, the government that oversees um, government parks, because it's a historical site. Whether or not we can still meet there, we don't know. We never formally checked it out because we learned that a spinning group is still meeting there. Uh, but in the meantime, we've decided that we're going to try to find a different place. We used to pay rent and we don't have that many members. So if we can get a spot that's a community spot that offers free space once a month, we're going to try for that. So <laughs> yesterday's video went out to about 66 people. Well, no, let me put it this way. I sent an email to 66 people with a video attached because if supposedly, if you do unlisted videos in YouTube, um, only the people who receive the link can open it. I sent it out and immediately people were telling me they couldn't open the link. Now I've used these kind of links often, but only for individuals. I never really sent it out in a, uh, a multi-recipient uh, uh, what, what would you call it, a group distribution email. So I thought that was probably the problem. So to make a quick fix, I just went into the video and long story short, I made it public rather than private or unlisted. And uh, so it went out to everybody. So all of you subscribers who got this wacky video, like what is she talking about? Why is she showing us these two libraries in Northern Rhode Island? <laughs> Well, that was what it was about. It was supposed to be going to the Hook and Needle Guild. And um, it did, finally. So I just wanted to put up an explanation this morning as to why that all happened yesterday. But let's get back to other things. Um, knitting. 
Let me show you what I'm doing. No, it's not a dishcloth. <laughs> Yay. All right. I'm making, I started this shawl, not last November, but the November before, I believe, is when I first bought, I bought some um, mini skeins to make this Stephen West um, shawl. Very colorful. It's called the Painting Bricks Shawl. Now, if you watch my channel, you know that I had done the shawlography last year or two years ago, and that was a blast. I had a lot of fun doing it. And I just saw this at, a sh at the show, and um, somebody had uh, knitted it up for a sample, and I just really was, I really liked it. So I bought some minis at the show, which I, you know, wound into balls. But then I was uh, getting a slow start on it because... The main color, you can see the main color in this one is the black, but I didn't want to do black. I wanted to do something brighter. Um, I wear a lot of black. So I had purchased a skein with my original minis, but it was somewhat, I don't know if it was speckled or variegated or what, but it couldn't work as the color that held this thing together. So then I bought... A few months passed, so I didn't start the shawl. A few months passed, and then I bought this other, what I thought would be a plain color, but the um, the texture and the size, even though they were both fingering weight, just they didn't match my um, minis. I have a bunch of minis here that I've wound up. These were minis from, oh, <laughs> I, I use a, something like, a, it's not exactly a silverware tray, but I find that putting it in a thing like this so that I can keep track of the balls is kind of better than a bag. So yeah, those are from Toad Hollow and I needed a, 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 a twist that was similar to that. So then long story short, I keep saying that it's probably way too late. Um, Skein Yarns in um, East Greenwich had a Miss Babs trunk show this year and I got, um, this color, which if my dog hadn't eaten the label, I'd be able to tell you the color, but uh, it's a very, very pale gray. And so that is working very well with my Toad Hollow yarn. And now that I'm not doing dishcloths, I mean, I've shown this a little bit, like I've shown it probably about this far, <laughs> but um, this last week I was able to make a little bit of progress in between Oliver coming in and chewing up my size 5 29 inch needles so i have to replace those but here's what it's looking like here's here are some of the colors i'm really liking it it looks complicated but it's a real easy pattern to follow because once you start your edges i mean you're just going to pay attention at the end because this is where you're doing your increases so those ends the beginnings and the ends usually change and that's where you might make one left make one right and change the edge to always knit every row i think for a to have a nice edging on the side but other than that all these have been the same and you do it in rows of four like you'd use the the main color four rows and then you do this in four rows and it's really a real nice pattern it's actually knit, knit and pearl. And the only other things, you, oh, slip. This is achieved by slipping stitches. And um, as I said, make one left and make one right. And I know some people don't want to do that, but it's so easy. And especially if you have from Katrinkles, Katrinkles makes a number of these things. Katrinkles is also, um, a Rhode Island company. It is. <laughs> and uh, it's a little, it's a little mocker. It's a little um, like a, a keychain thing. I hang it on my basket or I hang it wherever. And um, it shows, it tells you to make one right what to do and to make one left what to do. And when you have that right at hand, when you're knitting, it's just a matter of, oh yeah, what do I do? I pick up that bob between the stitches front to back knit in the front or else back to front knit in the back is that yeah from front to back knit in the back from back to front knit in the front 
it's similar. It's simple. It's easy. It's one stitch. Or sometimes you might make a stitch. Did you ever make a stitch? Make a stitch is super simple. As you're going along, let me show you. If you're um, knitting along and then it says make a stitch, <laughs> make a stitch, all you do is take this, your right hand needle, wrap your yarn around your finger or your thumb, and do that. And that's make a stitch. If you see M1 or M2, that's what you do. Simple. So it's a real easy. It goes, it's been going pretty good. And I'm so happy to be knitting a nice, soft, tiny yarn. Well, not that tiny, but uh, fingering is nice. So I'm not, I'm kind of trying to keep the same pattern. I mean, if as I go along, like one, two, three, four, five, I've got 12 colors I'm using. And so I'm just going to repeat them in the same order. Not any particular order. It's not rainbow or anything. So that's what I'm doing there. I also have thrum mittens. I didn't bring them in. Thrum mittens that I'm supposed to be working on for my husband. But see, it's not snowing. It's going to rain all week. And so I'm kind of putting off his mittens. They were for Christmas. But now that I missed that date, I keep moving them along. Those are the only two things I have on needles now. However, I found a really cool... I think it was... One of these free patterns that has been going by us every day on, on Ravelry and on Facebook. So I I got this free um, pattern from Universal Yarn Company. I think it, it's, um, I think they, I, I don't know why I like these so much. 12 Days of Winter uh, Collection. They're called um, Blue Spruce Socks. I thought they're so cute. Let's get some light on them. Now, it's Universal Yarns. I don't know who might carry it around here. It says Joann's. It says um, some of the nicer yarn stores. However, sometimes you show the stores and they don't have this, the same colors. They've got a lot of colors in this. So I ordered it right from Universal. Um, they're DK. So first of all, that's cool. I, I've only made maybe one pair of a heavier sock like that. Not that DK is heavy, but I've made um, worsted weight, and those are a little heavier when they're finished. They go in boots. Well, they don't have to, but I, that's what I do. Um, so anyway, this is a deluxe DK tweed yarn. It's super wash wool, 90%, 7% acrylic, and 3% viscose. So those three colors are walnut, porcelain, and the blue is called Aegean. Well, I bought the porcelain and I bought the Aegean, but I didn't want the brown. I switched it off for a charcoal, which I thought would look nice. It's three balls. They're on sale right now, 30% off. I think they were like $13 a ball and they're on sale for $9 and change. But the nice thing about it is, according to the pattern, it says... What does it say? It let's say it over here. It says, I said it somewhere. It said because of the amount of yarn that you use. Let's see, cozy and quick knit that will make you want to cozy up with a book and cocoa by the fireplace. Socks are wonderful gifts. Blah blah blah. At approximately eighty grams per pair. You can make up to three pairs with the required yarn. Simply switch the colors around. Because as you can see, you're going to use a lot of blue, but not much of the other two balls. So then you can switch to the, I'm going to use charcoal and make those blue spruce. I'll make this pot charcoal and make a pair of blue. And then, I don't know. Yeah, I could probably make a white. I could make all of this white put in a charcoal or a blue tree. Well, I just have to see what I've got left for yarn, but it should be fun because it's DK. It takes a size six, I think, six and four um, needles. So you can find them at Universal Yarn. I don't know if this thing is still free, but it was free. Well, look up the 12 Days of Winter collection, see what I don't know what the 12 days of winter when they started. I think it was last week. So that's that. 
and um, I'm still into my tidying and cleaning up. I'm watching all the people doing all their um, um, New Year's resolutions. Yeah. I have a few. I'm not going to mention them yet. So far, they're going well. Um, I saw an interesting uh, card maker on the videos on YouTube this morning. And what, instead of saying all the things she's going to do in 2023, she listed 23 things she's not going to do in 2023, which I found to be very interesting and a cool twist on the resolution thing. Like there are a lot, of, like in her case, she says, I'm not buying any more um, dyes for stamping because every time she buys them, she doesn't use them as much as she thinks she will. And they're not cheap. Just like any, I don't care what your hobby is nowadays nothing's cheap <laughs> so you have to like use discretion in your purchases so i think the 23 things of 19 um, 2023 that you're not going to do might be helpful because that's how you break bad habits by not doing them so i'm going to try to put together a list for myself one more thing i want to show da, 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 da. can i bring it down here i don't know if i can make it reach no nope, i'll lift up the box i bought another sewing machine on sunday um Surprise, surprise. I, what does this make? I'm not even counting anymore. That should be one of mine. Not buying any new machines. Oh, too late. I bought one in 2023. I bought this Sunday at Walmart. It's the serger. Story behind my serger is I had a serger. I had a mid, mid of the, middle of the line serger, an Elna, 440 something or other. I bought it at a good price might have been in the 300s or 400s but i never quite liked it for whatever reason i don't know i, I don't even know anymore so um i went to the dealer where i bought it and said can i trade this i want a different serger and then i decided i was going to be doing all these surging projects so i wanted a, a fancy serger so i got one of the air threading ones and it was wonderful it was wonderful it was so much machine i paid more money than i expected to or wanted to i paid twice as much as what i thought i'd spend it was a very expensive machine it was like i thought i'd spend 15 on a machine i spent three thousand, and then um i kept it for one year during covid i kept it for one full year and i said i'm not using the, what was i doing um i wasn't doing the garment sewing i thought i'd be doing i wasn't i mean there's only so many things you can repair I could use a zigzag stitch if I'm going to repair. So that, that I don't see the value in keeping this thing around. And I had always wanted a Bernina sewing machine. So I took the, I think mine was a baby lock. So I took the baby lock in and said, what would you give me for trade? And she gave me $2,000 for trade. And after having it for a year, I mean, can't beat that. So I said, very good. I'll take that. So, and at the time, that was a year and a half ago, I said, I'm just going to replace it with like, a, a very low price serger because for what I use it for, I don't need it to be very fancy. But I never replaced it. And I have a bunch of repairs or a lot of things. Like I want to start sewing some tops and things for myself out of knits. Oh, look at this. Like I just cut off a t-shirt. I don't, t-shirts. I end up in t-shirts a lot during the day because I have to, I'm not, I'm sloppy and I spill stuff. I get bleach stuff on me, but I like it to at least look nice to start. And I just cut the collar off of this. But if I had a serger, I would have stitched the edge, you know, and maybe made an edge on the t-shirt. Not that that's, but I want to start sewing again, garments, especially tops. So that's why I got this serger. I watched a lot of YouTube videos. It seemed to get good reviews um so i don't know but brother is a very i love brother machines i have a brother scan and cut and i've got two brother i got a brother embroidery machine and i've got a brother quilting machine um they call it a quilting machine because it has the long throat uh but and it does all the stitches and um i i really really like that brand now i think they're very innovative anyway so acquisition things i'm working on an explanation of yesterday's debacle. <laughs> I hate, I hated, as soon as I did it, I didn't have time to make this video after making the videos yesterday because 
the dog had to have an echocardiogram yesterday. I had other things to do. And then the medication changed. I had to go fix her up. And that took a lot of time. There was something else I had to do that took a lot of time, which uh, I don't even remember now. But any anyhow, I didn't have enough time after making the videos yesterday to make this video to give you the explanation of yesterday's video. For those of you who saw it and for those who didn't, it's moot, no point. <laughs> but I just, it was it, it was bugging me as soon as I said, oh man, I gotta make this thing public so that all, the, all my um, guild friends can see it. And then at that point, everybody's gonna see it and they're gonna say, what the heck is she doing? What is she talking about? What do you mean where are we gonna meet? You know, I didn't wanna like, I do that when I watch other people's videos and I see it's got like a ballet in it or something. I go, oh, this must be like their family. And I think all things, not that it's a, you know, it's not a bad thing. I just wanted to explain it away. So that's it for today on Tuesday, the 5th. No, the 3rd. <laughs> Don't rush the year. Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. I have to keep saying it so that I embed the year into my brain. So have a good week. We still have plenty we can do. This is the first week of the year. This is the most energized I ever am. I don't know why this new year always sparks this energy into me, but um, hey, go with it while it's there because I can very easily run out of steam. Have a good week and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.